Hi guys, my name is Ademila Badmos and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, do not forget to like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, just general comments, please leave it in the comment section. I would uh, be sure to attend to it as I see it. And um, in this video, we are supposed to start the test definition, I mean the step definition. And like I said in the previous video that I would uh, take time to complete that the remaining steps so what um the other thing i'm also going to do here is i'm going to do the same thing again but this time around for the glitch user so i'm going to just do for glitch user and i'll put the glitch username and i insert the password i click and everything will remain the same and i will log out so which means we have for two steps and um for this to run all we need to do is either we can create a, a configuration file here for ourselves. Um, we can get behavior, but I'm sure if we are using the um, the if we are not using the because we are using the PyCharm community community edition. That's why we didn't get all the available test configuration if you're using the um, professional edition i am quite sure we will be able to get that of um, uh, behave as one of the configuration but that's not a showstopper we can come into our uh, terminal or our command prompt and type in the word behave and this will run for us but bear in mind we've not actually written any test definition for those who have experience with uh, BDD, but we want to create it ourselves. But there's a shortcut to that, and that's what I want to achieve here. So I'll just eat, I'll type behave and hit enter, and it, it will give me a snippet that I can use. So, which means I do not need to write those steps by myself because a snippet for it has been created here. So I can copy all of this. Copy everything here and put inside our test steps. So before I put anything, I'll just um, before I put anything, I would import behave. So from in behave, I will just import all the steps I need. So instead of just specifying when, giving when, then I will just do this, which I've done in previous videos to show that everything inside it. I would want it then I can paste in every other thing so now that we've pasted this in we have created step definition but we need to put things into it and make sure it works so what I'm going to do is I am going to import the other stuff that would help us here and everything that we need is inside our page update file what I've taken liberty to do is rather than create separate page object files I have created one page object file that can accept arguments and parameters and would work that way I don't need to create several page object files I discussed this extensively in page object modeling and I also discussed this a bit in the TDD series and I'm telling you again now that this is the way to save yourself a lot of stress rather than be creating several page objects you can create one like looks like an utility file but uh, it's not exactly an utility file it's just a way to just reuse your steps and you don't need to create so many steps so now that we have done that so in our test definition we just need to import that so i will import uh, from resources in the page object file i would import the class that is there and that is the home page object and also i would need my element mappers because I did not uh, use the element mapper so much in the page object file so I will get it from data elements and from the data elements I will get uh, the element mapper and because there are several classes inside it I will just use an asterisk to bring everything in so the next thing I'm going to do is just instantiate the class so I'll say maybe let me call it um, browse and um, just instantiate the class 
that I need for everything. So, which means I have all the properties of this page object files now and I can use them as I will. So, let's get to the steps. So, given I'm on the source demo page, it means I can call the, 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 this, and it, that will be for, I can call this method launch page, which essentially would launch the page for me because I've already specified it to launch the page, login page URL, and that's inside the class login page, the URL, so it will launch that for me, ideally. So, from this same step definition, I insert the username field. So, which means I can use the method that I will use to, the method that I've created to fill in any details, which is field details. And in my field details method, if you check, in my field details method, it accepts two arguments, the, the field where I need to impute something and the text that I need to impute. So that would be, so let me put that in. So which means I will need on the login page, I will need the username field. When I get the username field, then on the test data page, no, I think on the login page again, on the login page, I will get the username and the username will be standard since that, that's the one I need. So I'll insert that into it, then um, I can also insert password. So let me insert password, few details again, login page, password field then the login page, password itself. And I can click the login button as well by just doing browse and um, few details, login page, the, the login button itself. And that essentially solves this for us. So the rest, I will fill in later video because I do not want this to be long, so I will just change all this raise not implemented error into print so it will just print this out so which means that it won't essentially run these steps but it will just make them pass but that's not what, what we need i will just fill the rest out later but let's test that this can work first so we'll do this for this then i would actually copy those steps for the glitch username as well so I would do print. So when it comes to insert glitch username, I will come here, copy this. Where is it again? Insert glitch, glitch username. I will copy this and paste. Then I will change this to glitch. So I just want to make sure that the, the test will pass. Okay, I need to remove this. So I just want to make sure that the test will pass for both scenarios because the only thing that is different is the username in both scenarios if you check every other thing looks the same the only thing that is different is the glitch username so I'll try to do that and the rest in the next video I would have filled in the right steps into it then we'll move from there because we still have some other things to talk about so let's run it again and see this time it should launch the page for us exactly yeah and one field okay both of them failed i click the login button and i click the login button so what happened to the login button oh so we used the wrong step in the login button detail so instead of few details it should be click element so with that Let's run the test again and this time it should pass. Okay. And this login should be successful too. As you can see, one feature passed and the two scenarios under it has passed and all. So this has been able to help us establish how to implement our steps definition. But as we go deeper into it, we'll be looking at reusing steps and how to reduce the number of lines we write in our Gherkin syntaxes.
so if you find this useful please do not forget to leave a comment and also like and subscribe see you in the next video bye bye